guys, it's Zach from My Shire Farm, and uh, we are going to be doing our video today. But real quick, I've got Alyssa out here. She's feeling better, and she's got her six foot six boa. So I'm gonna go away, and she can just. Nope, show you need you. to sit down. So she's in shed, can't see very well, which is perfect for me, but I, she just hissed at me. So we're gonna put her away in just a second. Um, but yeah, that's the snake. So that's, there you go. Everybody's been asking about it because I said I'd show everybody. So that is the snake. It eats uh, primarily quail, quail males. So um, that's about that. Uh, I do have some help out here. I've got both my daughters. Alyssa's gonna be taking the uh, snake back to its place. All the way down. And uh, then she'll all be reading all questions. I've got uh, Ashley, my other daughter out here, that is writing down names. So if you wanna uh, be entered into the drawing um, one more time for the live video for the uh, $89.99 Wynola Ranch, uh, uh, breeder cage uh, you'll want to comment quail is the new chicken uh, and she is writing down names now and uh, Ashley can you hand me the, the hat? I'm taking her back yeah yep let's get that snake away from you. so I've already added uh, 234 names from the video so as you can see they're all right here I don't know if you can see or not you're on the tripod uh, so there's that and then she's adding on and then, uh, and then there's that. I do have a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Yeah, I need to, oh, I need to show me how to get to the... You just click live chat. I can... Oh boy, lots of... Oh boy. Uh, so, and we've got Pop out here that is going to do his best with technology. So, uh, a couple different things. Um, number one, uh, so I've already asked permission to use this and they said it's completely cool um, but um, someone had ordered eggs I shipped them out and then they messaged me and they've been completely cool about this um, but for some reason we have not gotten an update so obviously I can't find out until tomorrow um, they have been uh, extremely patient uh, obviously it is kind of out of my control uh, I dropped them off, they got the, the tracking number to it, um, but it's not said that it was delivered, it's not said it's at the hub, or anything like that. Um, so, when I say that I guarantee, you know, a good hatch rate, and I guarantee that, that they'll arrive, and things like that, obviously when they go to the post office, I can't, it, it's, you know, that's out of my control, um, but hopefully I'm going to go in tomorrow, we're going to talk to them, I'm going to find out what's going on. Um, we'll get them their eggs as fast as possible. If there's a mix up, mix up then obviously I'm going to reship for free um, and get them to, to them as fast as possible. Um, so in their case, they had ordered some more eggs and so everything was supposed to go in at one time. So it is a little inconvenient and I completely understand that and they've been completely understanding. Um, but I do hear that enough, you know, as far as, you know, the post office messing up. So we'll take care of you, don't stress, um, we'll, we'll get you taken care of, but I wanted to use that. So I think that was all. Um, I already mentioned that at the end of this video we are going to be doing a giveaway for a Wynola Ranch cage. I have been thinking about it quite a bit and I knew there was going to be a ton of people <clears throat> that um, was going to, to be here and asking questions. In fact, while I'm talking, if you want to go ahead and start asking your questions as far as um, a breeding program and genetics go, I promise I will get to you the questions. I do think that I'm going to cut it off at a certain time um, if there is too many questions because I don't want this to be a two, three hour long thing. Um, but there's no reason why I can't come back uh, next time and, and we do part two. Um, but I will try to move as fast as possible and, and not rant like I'm doing right now. So, uh, without further delay, we'll get started. Um, so, Papa? I think we got a five-in farm. It says, can Coturnix raise babies by themselves? Can, can Coturnix raise baby by themselves? The simplest explanation of that is Coturnix have been too domesticated. 
So I'm not saying it can't happen, I'm saying it's very, very unlikely. Um, so we have some of our customers that uh, get a broody hen, and that's phenomenal. We do not have it here. They need to have more of a natural environment. Um, so because we have more of a production environment, not saying that we you know, put them all in a small space, but it's more of a production atmosphere, uh, so ours will not go broody. Um, so it's possible, it's just very, very... Someone said it's a little hard to hear you. A little hard to hear me. I can move up closer, and I will try to talk a little bit louder. Can you hear me better now? So, to answer your question, it is possible. It's rare, but it is, it is possible. Next question is, Chicky Chickens, is what is your cost per egg to produce? What is my cost per egg to produce? Uh, I'm gonna say around 12 cents. If you're factoring in everything. everything. All right, I would agree with that. All right. Uh, he would agree. How, well, it, it might, yeah, I would have probably said something lower, but that's good. <laughs> how often do you replace your breeders? We. That's a two-part question. Um, we replace our hens once a year. We replace our males twice a year. Um, so, uh, just a quick example. Last week, I put in 220 hatching eggs of pansies, right? Well, my colony cage is 50 hens plus the males, which I'll have plenty of males. Um, so why did I put so many in? Well, I want to be selective, which we'll talk about as far as the breeding program goes. Um, and then I can choose which ones I want to use. And then whatever I don't want to use, I can either sell or put in a mixed cage or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then this week I'm putting in the German pastels, the same thing. Um, and then so on and so forth. We just finished uh, a part of our jumbos. Jumbos are completely different than everything else, which I'm sure we'll get into. Um, but I did my one stage of the jumbos. Jumbos is a multiple stage, whereas colors, you put enough in, be selective on what you want, and, uh, and then wait till next year to do it again. Okay, our next question is from Hatch Poultry. We have a breed of jumbo Rosetta quail above 12 ounces. What are your thoughts on it, and should we sell it to the public? We have reached 14 to 16 ounces with them. Um, I would need a little bit more information with that. Um, I have some breeder friends in Caternix, uh, and then we also have the experience here. For about a year, we had jumbo Tibetans, which is similar, and they were averaging about 12 ounces, and we were very excited. Um, the problem is, is it's very hard to keep them um, at jumbo weight. So my recommendation to you, and I would need more information, is I would go three generations out. If you still have jumbos three generations out, and the majority are jumbos, um, then yeah, absolutely. Is it as simple as selecting for the desired trait? It is, it, say that again. Is it as simple as selecting for the desired trait? Is it as simple as selecting for the desired trait? Most genetic questions are uh, yes and no. Yes, the answer to your question is yes. Um, but there's a lot of misconceptions about that. So for example, um, I know people sell jumbo wilds that are jumbo eggs, but they're 10 ounces. And then I know that they also sell a jumbo meat bird, but they have smaller eggs, right? We want to do both at the same time because if we feel like if you're, um, if you're purchasing jumbo eggs or live birds from us, you're wanting them for multiple purpose usually. So we want you to have the larger sized egg and the large bird all at the same time. So we have select, selectively bred for that. 
Now that does not mean that every egg in our cage is going to be 14 grams um, or 17 grams, um, but it does mean that you're going to get a healthy sized bird with a, a, a nice size egg. So if you look on our website or look on our eBay page or anything like that, our average is 14 ounce jumbo wilds and about 14 gram hatching eggs. Now that doesn't, we'll send you a 12 or 11 ounce. We might even send you a 10 gram egg, um, grams, not ounces. Um, but overall, you're gonna be happy with the product. Okay, what are the traits that I should breed for? <laughs> That's ask the question so that they may not hear the question. Oh, um, what is the traits that I should breed for? Mm. Everything is completely different. Completely different. Um, the ones you want to breed for. <laughs> yeah, the ones that you want to breed for, but like I said, breeding for jumbos, we have a much stricter policy and breeding program for jumbos than we do colors, you know? So to keep it simple, like I said, I put in 220 pansy eggs, right? All right, so let's just do simple math. So out of 220, let's just say 110 hatch. Out of that, 55 are hens. Now, if we get a 50% hatch here, I'm gonna be up a creek, right? So just simple. Now I need at least 50 hens, right? Now, I should have a ton more of that, so I'm going to select the ones that I want. Um, so you can do it that way. Now, as far as jumbos go, uh, our, our first generation, I think 25 to 30% did not make weight at 10 weeks. So obviously, we did not use them. Now that we're further along in the generations, I just finished a couple of new cages, and out of all the hens, out of 200 hens, we had two that did not make weight. So, you know, you just, you got to selectively breed. So yes, you want to pick what you want and just, you got to stay consistent with it. And it's more than just one generation. One generation can fool you, you know? So you might get exactly what you want in the jumbos to the first generation, but if you slack off at all, you'll lose it like that. And we know we, we've done that. Okay. Are there any plans to add more photos of each color bird to your website? Are there plans to add more photos to each color bird on the website? I, there was not a plan. If I hear feedback that you guys want more pictures, then probably. How many different generations does it take for you to have to breed a new color? How many generations does it take for you to have a new breed of color. For you to have a new breed of color. Well, um, it takes us quite a while, quite a while. We wanna do things right. Um, repeat business is huge for us. Um, so, you know, we wanna, we wanna make sure you're taken care of. So let's say, uh, let, let's talk about the Graufies, right? So that's the last color that I brought out. So the Graufies, I need you to mute that. I'm hearing feedback. Or, um, so the Graufies, we started with them, right? Well, we can't just have 10 Graufies and start offering the eggs. We need a full cage because if I offer it, you know, and I offer 30 counts, if I have five people that order and I have 10 eggs a day, well, that, <laughs> now I'm, they're off the website. So, you know, we, have, we, we take a lot longer because we sell large quantities. Um, but after that, typically we want to hatch them out at least three different times to know what the hatch rate is or what, how, how true they breed. So for example, the SSCs for us are never going to breed true and we chose it that way. That is a part of our breeding program, right? Um, but we want to know how many breed true. So like our Jumbo Wild is 99% breed true. Uh, our SSCs are about 55% breeding true. So, you know, so we want that. So rule of thumb is once you have how many you want, you typically want to hatch out at least three separate times. Okay. We were working on our sex linked quail line and we were on our third generation. Unfortunately, a predator, predator got into the barn and ate them all. 
Mm. What should we do, and is it worth trying again? You can hear they me, by the way. You can? You can. Okay. Uh, all right, so her question was sex-linked. Um, they, ha they were working on the program, and then a predator got in. They lost all the birds, and they want to know what they should do and if it's worth it. Um, Sex-linked quail is a specific demographic. You know, it's perfect. I mean, it's perfect for certain types that you're searching for, certain demographics that you're look looking for. Um, a lot of people don't care about that. Um, however, yes, if you were working on it, then there was a reason for it. I would recommend you doing it again. Um, if you want to contact me, uh, instead of starting over, I can send you what you need. So real quick, sex links, they hatch out Egyptian hens and sorry, pharaoh males. But you need the opposite for them to be sex links. So you need pharaoh hens over Egyptian males is what you need. So for that, for, for example, you could go online, you could purchase a 50 count pharaoh, a 50 count Egyptian, and then put the pharaoh hens over the Egyptian males and they'll be sex linked immediately because we've already done all that work. Um, typically, typically it is a third generation thing, which she had mentioned in her question, um, but we're already there on both. Uh, so that would be the fastest route. That's what I would do. Okay, when are you going to come party with us, Quail Hatch Nuts on BYC? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. I swear, I'm, I'm, it's on the phone. I've got the app. I even set up something. I just have to verify the account. You, and, didn't, ask, you didn't ask the question. Though. Oh, the question <laughs> is when am I going to get on? They can hear you? Okay. Oh, okay question was when I, when am I going to get on to uh, backyard chicken uh, it's a website kind of social media thing it seems really cool I've been on there a couple times uh, we have been getting quite a bit of sales off of it uh, Tanya um, has really been pushing us she's she's a great customer of mine um, I will I will start getting on there once a day starting October 1st <laughs> <laughs> I will make that my October goal. Okay, is there a way to have an effect on sex production? Creating more hens. Creating more... Is there a way... <laughs> okay. The question was, is there a way to increase sex production? So can you hatch out just hens? Or can you hatch out just males? <clears throat> no. <laughs> I don't care who posts what on YouTube. I just saw a video within the last week and he was saying, okay, well this egg is gonna be a hen and this egg is gonna be a male and I've hatched out numerous times and I'm right 100% of the time. Look, somebody might know something I don't know, but every breeder I have talked to, small and large, has been in the business a year or 20 years and all of our experience, that is not a thing. So I don't believe it. I'm going to do an experiment with it, um, but it is gonna be a long-term experiment, so like a year. Uh, but once we're in the new barn, that's the first experiment that I'm gonna try. But I highly doubt that's gonna work. Is it time to increase your target weight? It is, is it time to increase your target weight? I'm assuming you mean, should are we increasing our Jumbo weight? It doesn't say. That's by Bob White. Please Bob me. White, I need you to clarify, please. <laughs> Sorry. <clears> okay. <throat> Have you ever considered asking Alyssa to be in charge of your Instagram? I don't know. Have you asked me? And I, I forgot? did ask her. I think I also asked Ashley. I don't remember I, you I asking. I have your Instagram on my phone. Uh, Ashley has my Instagram on her phone. And you see how that's going. Maybe it's my turn, Ashley. Oh. Uh, I would love for the girls to get more involved. Um, they do help out, well, they helped out tremendously up until about six months ago, as far as the quail barn goes. I mean, they were working at least one day a week, 12 hours a day, and then probably two hours a day other than that. Uh, so they, 
they've got a work ethic. They know how to work. Uh, now that we've got George here and I'm here full time, uh, I don't really need them. They need to focus on themselves and school and things like that. Uh, but I would love, I, I think that's a great idea. I would, I, here's the problem. I'm a little anal about social media. Now, I'm not on all the social medias that I want to be on. I'm, I'm on Facebook a lot. I'm on YouTube a lot. I'm focusing on eBay. So Instagram, Twitter, Backyard Chicken. I just, I need to tell them how I want it done. But that's a great idea. If they'll do it. Sorry, we're trying to, having a technical difficulty. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. What is the sele selection criteria you use for the jumbo breeders not to lose your jumbo line? So I can tell you about our um, failure. So we were creating the sex link line um, and we mixed the birds and I lost the weight. So, uh, we've worked what a year and a half, two years, getting it back up, give or take. Um, so we did do that. So, uh, we put in, um, I'm a little lenient on the egg size. Um, I'm, I'm more looking for a nice size egg with a large, large quail. Uh, and then we weigh them at three weeks and get rid of the ones that don't make weight there. We weigh them again at six weeks. Um, now this is our, yeah, I'll tell you my little secret. So jumbos are anything over 10 ounces at 10 weeks old. That is technically what a jumbo is, right? Also, the second criteria for jumbo is they have to breed true. So for example, our SSCs can get to 11, 12. I've got a 14 ounce SSC in there, but SSCs do not hatch true. So I will never be able to advertise that I have jumbo silvers, right? So those are the two criteria. Now with that being said, um, if they are not at a minimum of 12 ounces, at 10 weeks old, or I'm sorry, if they are not at 12 ounces at eight weeks old, I do not use them in the breeding program. Now, luckily we have different resources to use them. So um, obviously the sex links are pharaoh hens over Egyptian males. So I can replace my Egyptian cage or my sex link cage. Uh, they can also go into my research stuff. They can also go into mixed cages or I can sell them. Um, so yeah, my secret is, is they have to be over 12 ounces at eight weeks old, which gives them two more weeks to grow and 12 is still a decent number. I reweigh them later on and it's, it's a good size. I think our largest, I think our largest was six, seven, seventeen point two, 17.2 with George and I just a couple weeks ago. I think it was 17.2 and we had a couple like 16.8s and things like that. Typically, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with the 14 ounce. Um, I'm happy with the 14 ounce because it's healthy for them. When you get to that one pound mark, and as far as you're wanting them to lay for an entire year, um, you're, you're pushing it pretty hard. You know, their, their body is heavier, their legs are giving out, they're rubbing the bottom. Uh, it's just, it's not good for them. It's uh, more strenuous for them to lay the eggs. So 14, they're healthy, they're happy, and they're laying nice size eggs. What is your intake on the Celadon egg? What is my intake on the Celadon egg? Um, I hate the Celadon gene. Hate it. Still working on it. Uh, I really, so the goal was that my Celadons were going to come out way before my growls. And now I'm working on another jumbo. And I was like, well, the Celadons will be out at the end of the year. And then my jumbos will be out, you know, 
If I push hard, I might be able to get them out by, you know, March. Um, I don't even know. My jumbos are much further along than my Celadon. So it looks as though that I'm going to be introducing a new jumbo that we're going to offer way before my Celadon. Um, the only reason for that is because the most we've had is about a 30% hatch true, meaning this it's a Celadon layer. They're all Celadon carriers, but you, you're not buying Celadon carriers. You're buying Celadon layers. So, and I think what I'm going to try to do is a different approach. Um, and the new, and we got to wait till the new barn's done. But I think that what I'd like to do is only offer live birds that are sell it on layers. Is what I'd like to do. But that's not been confirmed. Um, but sell it on is a very tricky, and if you want to do it right, it's a very long process. Very long process. Okay. Ask it. Am I back on? It looks like it. I'm back on? Okay. Delilah, get out of the way. Sorry, we had a issue. Okay. Um, I need you to read the yeah. question again. Um, I don't know if it went out when it, Bob asked the question. Okay, so Bob White asked if we should raise our standard from 10 ounces at 10 weeks. That is the definition of a jumbo caternix quail. That is not our standard at all. Okay. And the, have you heard of the meat maker line of quail? And do you think it's really just a gimmick and they're all just really jumbos? We don't even know if they're jumbos. Do we? <laughs> um, uh, the meat maker line is JMF, is who the meat maker line is. We do not have the JMF genetics. We do not have their line. We've never had their line. I don't know. So. Well, we've bought eggs from them. We do, we do not have the JMF meat maker line in that's, our building. That's true. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. <clears throat> I can explain it this way. There are jumbo pharaohs, right? There are jumbo browns, but they are the same thing. We call ours the jumbo wilds. They're all the same thing. If you call me and say, I need some jumbo wilds, or I need some jumbo browns, or I need some jumbo pharaohs, it's the same bird, it's just a different name. So I guess I don't know enough about it, but to me, a meat maker, Sounds like it would be a jumbo, but I, I don't know if it's a jumbo. I don't know. Okay. Hi from New Zealand. And Hi. I would love to see the snake. Uh, when I repost this, the snake is the very beginning of the video. So, like, just when I repost it, you'll just want to watch the first two minutes, and she'll show you her six foot six, twenty two pound red tail red tail boa constrictor <laughs> that's shedding and can't see well. Memorized all that in two minutes. Wait, <clears throat> I don't know if it's just my phone or if the I, live video is uh, Mine's stopped. fine. Okay. Okay, it's okay. just mine. Right. What is your personal favorite color quail? The SSC. The SSC stands for the Schofield Silver Collection. Through the years, I've gotten to know um, Perry Schofield himself. Uh, he's the one that, that produced the line and kept it alive for, I don't even know, 15, 20 years in Canada. Uh, he imported it here to JMF. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just, I love the varieties. I've mentioned before that the SSCs don't breed true. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook saying, you know, I'm just trying to work on the lavender gene or I'm just trying to work on that gene. And that's fine. I don't want that. I love the many varieties you get. You get charcoals, you get, uh, you know, really light ones. You get the silver or the silver and gold. You get the silver pharaohs. You get, I mean, you get so many varieties out of it. I would rather get a couple Italians than Tibetans out of it and get all those colors than, you know, get one silver color. I, I like the variety of silvers. But the, the German pastels are pretty much the same thing. Um, different color, but same, same deal as far as many varieties go. 
Uh, and that one carries the fee gene, which means you can get the fab fee, the growl fee, the pearl out of it, um, the snowy. Um, so I'm gonna stick with SSC. I always said SSC, I'm gonna stick with it. Do you want me to read things that are not questioned off as well? Uh, if they're saying where they're from, that's exciting. Okay. Um, what are the jumbo weights you have and do you check at three and six weeks? We do. Um, we have the jumbo wilds, which average 14 ounces. Um, and then we have our whites, which only average about two, 10 and a half. Um, but we are working on them now. That's why they're off the website. That's why they're off eBay. Um, I've got a guy that begs me every week to have some and I'm just putting everything in for us because we've worked very hard for, like I said, a year and a half to two years on our Jumbo Wilds to get them there and now we're really working on the whites. Okay, um, Salvador Santiago says, how can I buy quail starter from you? I'm assuming that means food. Uh, you're talking about the food. Uh, it, it is farm pickup only really. Uh, the shipping for 50 pound bags, just it's, it's not worth it as far as the price goes. Um, if you're talking about the starter set, um, I think we took those off the website. We do not have any more cages for sale. Um, I don't know if we will ever again. If, if we do, then it's gonna be a while because uh, Papa's busy building this. Um, but our live birds will be up and running next week. Uh, like I said, I started the program again and I'm not getting away from it. So it'll be, I'm hatching out 200 eggs to sell every week and 200 for us to replace. Um, and we've got two week olds, week olds and day olds in there now. And then I'm putting more in and more go into lockdown next week. So I'll be having 200 birds a week going forward. Okay, SSC obviously doesn't breed true. What colors do you get when they don't breed true? Uh, you'll get Tibetan and you'll get Italian. A pharaoh could jump out there every once in a while. Um, you'll get a couple white ones. Maybe a Rosetta, I think that's all. Got somebody here from Louisiana. Hi. And Houston, Texas. Hello. Hello, Louisiana and Houston. And Ireland. Hi, Ireland. And New Zealand. That's cool. Alabama. Alabama. Okay. Do you ship slash sell your hatching eggs year round? We do. We ship all year. Um, the worst time of year to ship is the summer but we still average over a 50% hatch rate on shipped eggs, so that's really cool. Um, best time is fall and spring. They're about equal. Uh, and winter, um, you know, during the winter, I think we only had to reship like four, four times, and two of them was because the post office massively screwed up. Like, it took like two weeks to get there. Um, so... Yeah, we ship all year. So we got somebody from the UK. Hello, UK. And is it possible to breed bobwhite, quail, and caternix? I do not have personal experience with this. It is true. Um, you can breed caternix with bobwhites, um, but obviously it's a cross, which means you can't hatch anything from them. So that's why I've never tried. Okay, this is from Amanda. Do you think the spots on the jumbo eggs have any meaning or do the hens just change the spots depending on where they lay for camouflage? I don't think there's a meaning behind it, but it's too I've, deep for you. That, yeah, that, <laughs> that is way too deep for me to think about right now, but that's a really good thing. I'm probably going to consume myself with that thought all day tomorrow in the barn. Like, hmm, okay. I've what? not thought about okay. that. Sorry. What are Goliath quail? I just bought some eggs and they are incubating now. I am not too familiar with them, so I would rather not say. 
I've heard about them, I know a little bit about them, but nowhere enough to even say anything. Is it like a jumbo? No, it's a different breed. Oh. Okay, how do you create jumbo feral? So, my biggest tip that I can give you guys would be if you want to breed and you want to have a breeding program and you care about genetics and you want to do this, the most important thing that you need is um, patience. You've got to have patience. So, I believe uh, there's one on the porch where I usually sit. Um, sorry, they were talking, I was listening, I got sidetracked. Um, all right, so I think I was talking to New Zealand last week on a live video, and they said that uh, they can't get eggs shipped to them due to customs and all that, uh, and also um, they don't have jumbos there. They're non-existent. So you got to do a little bit at a time. So number one, your genetics is very important. Your bloodline is very important. So is your feed. So you want to make sure that you have the highest protein, um, the best feed for them, and you just want to start small. So you want to average them out. So let's just say you take, let's say you have 50 quail, right? Um, and, or let's say you have 50 hens. Let's say you collect and then you hatch out, right? The first generation Weigh, find out what your average is, and do not put anything in there that's below that, right? And then you're just going to keep doing that. So a lot of these people on Facebook and on YouTube and all these people are acting like genetics are this extremely hard thing that only certain people can understand. It's that simple. You can talk about, you know, the header the heterogene and the EB gene and the, this F1 and F2 and slow and steady wins the race. So hatch out, find out what your average is. Your average for jumbos at first might be eight ounces. That's okay. That just means anything below eight, do not put in your breeder cage. Hatch out again and then go up to maybe 8.2 and then so on and so forth. Scoop back. We're going to scoop back. Maybe. Yeah. Little more. More, 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 more. Gotta get under light. Oh. There we go. Yep, getting a little dark here. So I hope that answered that question. Okay. Everybody else has to move, so hold on just a second. Yep. <clears throat> um, usually, while everybody's moving, usually I'm holding the camera. And a lot of people get mad because, you know, I'm holding it and they don't like it. So I put it on the tripod. But if it's on the tripod, then I can't read the comments and it's driving me crazy. Um, so, anyways, the whole point of that, for me saying that, is uh, let me know if you're liking this. Let me know if you want us to continue to do this next week or next month. Next time I do it, Papa will be next week. Which, before I forget... Tomorrow, he'll be doing the video on the topic for next week that I think you're going to like a lot. Um, and also, he has a very big surprise for you. So, uh, yeah, lots to do tomorrow. Okay, do you sell day-old chicks? And if so, how do you keep them warm enough? I know that they would only be pickup only. Yes. They are pickup only. We do not ship day-olds. Um... And I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, we put, you know, we put the box together and we cover it up where there's very little air going in, but enough for them to not suffocate, obviously. Um, and then... Uh, dead of winter is not a good idea. <laughs> don't do it in the dead of winter. Yeah, don't do it in the dead of winter. Um, but we've had people, we've had people drive three hours to get here and drive back with day olds and they've not lost any. I've taken some to... Uh, Michigan in the dead of winter and have lost maybe two or three the whole process and that was a tour that I did last year Which I have had quite a bit of questions with that um, 
we probably will not be doing a tour this year because I'm just I just don't have the time. Okay. Eventually we'll do it again. This isn't a breeding question, but what is your opinion of good pay for a custom bag of good game bird feed? We have worked out a deal with the feed company, but the price per bag is iffy. Um. You have to decide. Okay, that's that's a personal question. Delilah, go lay down. Um, that's a hard question for me to answer. That's a hard question for me to answer. Um, I can say that we have worked out deals, um, and we buy in bulk, and we go through one company, um, they're both local, but we go through one local feed store that we get our layer feed from, and one local feed store that we get our starter chick feed from. The starter chick feed is very expensive, like... Eighteen fifty a bag, expensive, but that is the feed that the PhD doctor worked with us on, and we've seen huge. I mean, it's from what we were using to what we use now. It's just the colors are more vibrant, the jumbos are bigger, all of our birds are a little bit bigger, they're healthier, um, less fatality. I mean, it's just it to us, it's worth it. But it, it, you know, it, it depends. It, that's a one-on-one -on -one basis. Sorry. Okay. How big of a test group do you use for experimenting with colors? Uh, it varies on what I want to do. It varies. Do you feed game bird twenty-eight percent their whole life, or do you lower <clears throat> the protein amount as they change? Uh, I will answer that in just a second. Go back to the last one. What what she asked? Um, or he? How big of a test group do you use with experimenting with colors? Yeah, I misunderstood that question. How big of a test group do you use? Typically, um, I've used one on one, so I put one male with one hen before. Um, I've done three males in one hen. Um, typically, that's the largest we want to go. So if you've got if you've got a cage of 20 mixed colored quail and five males, right? Um, that's not research. That's a mixed cage. Research is a specific thing you're looking for. And then the next question was... Mortality. What, what was the question after that? Um, do you feed game birds 28% their whole life, or do you lower the protein amount as they change? Do I feed game birds 28% the entire life, or do I switch? Um, I have actually gotten quite a bit of slack on this lately. And so we had talked, I think we talked about last week about haters and stuff like that. Um, so this video that I did just the other day about the giveaway, I had like five, like, thumb down things like I didn't I don't even I don't even I don't understand anyways the reason I said that is because I have a different philosophy on that because other people have convinced me right so we feed 28% um, for a while once they go into the breeding cage once I've weighed them once I've picked the colors whatever the case may be so when they're 10 weeks old we switch over to a layer feed the layer feed is only 16? I think it's only 16% protein. I could be wrong on that. But it's low. It's very low. But when they're starting to lay, they're not going to be growing anymore, and you don't need to pay for the protein. However the high the protein is, the, the higher the price is. So why pay more when you don't need it? Um, plus, you need the calcium, you need the fiber, you need other stuff for them to lay the eggs and you need less protein. So we switch it up at 10 weeks um, because it's cheaper and because they need different things because they're at a different stage in their life.
Okay. I got a lot of slack on that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to get all these now. Average mortality from day old chick to adult breeder. Ooh, that's a good question. That might be the best question I've gotten. That's a hard question. Ask, answer, ask the question. Now. Uh, the question is, what is the fatality ratio? Mortality. 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 Oh. Yeah, average mortality yeah. from day old from to day adult. old to Adult. adulthood. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Disappointment. No, it varies. Always a catastrophe. There can always <laughs> there can always be a disaster. I would say on average we lose five percent. I would say on average. Now we've had issues before where I have overheated them, or the light has went out, or the water spilled over, and I've lost 200 at a time, and had a 100%. <laughs> um, but on average, 5% is kind of what you're looking at. If you're hitting five to seven, you know, we might be able to tweak a little bit for you, but if you're hitting that 10 to 15, um, and if you have more than 1% after the first week dying, then you need to contact me and I need to try to help. If they get past the first week, they should be fine. Now, you'll lose one every once in a while, but that's... If you're losing more than more than one or two, you, we've got an issue we need to work out. Okay. Do you only use your largest eggs for your own breeding or straight run? Um, I put... Oh, <laughs> Both depends on what I'm working on. There's some that I don't, I want the prettiest color, so I'm going to put in every egg I got. Some of them I am working on uh, weight and consistency. Some I'm working on the um, egg weight, uh, and obviously jumbos I'm, I'm extreme on. So we've got 22 colors. And so I can't be extreme on every color because that's too much for me. So there's going to be some colors, like our lowest sellers, that I'm just going to put in what we got, and I'm going to pick what we've got and put them in for the next generation. And then there's some that are our high sellers that I'm very picky on, and then our jumbos are absolutely extreme. What kind of mix do you think you would get if you bred a silver with an Italian gold? Uh, you would get, oh crap, who asked that? David Hawley. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. He, you would text me today and said you didn't, weren't going to make it. And I said, text me the question, I'll answer it first thing. And I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay, so silvers don't read true, so you need to remember that. Okay, so you're going to get some odd colors in there. But generally... We're going to say you're going to get 40% of the silver gene, right? So that means silver, and then you could get a Tibetan or Italian or, you know, throw in a rosette every once in a while, but you're going to get 40% average, a silver gene. You're going to get 40% Italian. You're going to get 20% silver and gold. Um... So it's a little tricky and, you know, typically you're not really going to see results like that and start getting them until about generation, if you're lucky, generation two, um, typically generation three. Just remember, three is the magic number. If you're wanting to get somewhere, you know, whether you're wanting to bring a new color out or bring a new jumbo out or sex links or whatever the case may be. Generation three is usually your magic number to hit. Um, so some obviously the more... Say, say that again? Some people say a lot. Some people say a lot. That's not been our experience. And I just want to say now, this is just my thoughts from my experience. So if someone disagrees or has something else, then that's completely fine. There's more than one way to skin a cat. But from my experience... You'll get 40 silver, 40 Italian, 20 silver and gold, um, but it could be a crapshoot for the first generation. 
you'll start seeing results in generation two, and then you'll start seeing what you want in generation three, is my experience. Okay, we kind of already went over this, but it said, should quail be fed the same protein amount their whole life? I, uh, the place I get feed, it has 30% for starter and 18% for later feed. I am so sorry, I completely blocked you out. Wow. I didn't okay. hear Ouch. any of it. Okay. <laughs> um, I got the last part. 30% <laughs> starter, 18% layer. Jack Stenson said, should quail be fed the same protein amount their whole life, the place I get feed from oh, okay. has yeah, 30%. I, I have already answered that. Uh, we do 28% for the first uh, 10 weeks, and then we move them down to whatever it is. I think it's, I don't know. 15, 16% protein. I cannot stress this enough, and I know that there's a lot more people on than what usually is, I think, I don't know, I can't see anything, but um, it's very important that they have other stuff in their feed once they start laying. If you're just focused on the protein for layers, you're going to get a lot of prolapse and you're gonna get a lot of them that die because they're egg bound, because they don't have the right stuff, right ingredients in their feed. Hmm. Okay, um, we have people that saying that they like this new style of recording. Cool, I did have one more question. If you guys could start commenting, I'd really appreciate it. We do like the fact of just cutting it short in an hour and then having another video, right? I think that's what I like, but I wanted to get your guys' feedback. Um, since I'm using three more people here, we are going to cut it in about, I don't know what time it is. What time is it? 7.53. Alright, so we're going to spend maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15, finishing everything up. Um, and then, obviously, we can do a part two, uh, the next video that I do, to answer more questions, because I know that a lot of you have a bunch of questions. Um, I know some people are going to get upset because they're here to get their question answered, but I can't get to everybody. But I, I'd like your guys' feedback. Go ahead. Somebody from New Zealand says hi. Hi, New Zealand. Okay, when weighing your jumbos, what weight do you look for in the third week and then again in the sixth week? Four, eight, twelve. Somebody from mm. Florida. Four and a half. Sorry. At three weeks, we want them to be four and a half ounces. Puerto Rico. Hi, Puerto Rico. And where was the other place? Florida. Florida. Welcome. Sorry, I'm still looking. Okay, can you add a breeding chart slash list of what makes what color to your website, like a cheat sheet? Mm, that would be a great idea. That would be a great idea. I don't know when I'll do it. I'm not promising anything. I've already promised for October I'm going to be on BYC, so October is already taken. Um, but we can we can start working on it. Okay. Good idea. What is your opinion of hours of light to use during the winter months for best laying production? 16 hours is the standard. We do 16 all year. Okay. What other kinds of things do they need in their feed for laying? Calcium would be obvious. But are there other things that they need? Fiber is very important. Uh, I did do a video on just our feed, um, and it was right after I had talked to the PhD doctor and wrote all this stuff down and worked with the feed company to um, custom our own feed. I would recommend watching that. Do you remember what it's called? Um, I can find it. My Shire Feed. I don't know. Somebody's looking for it now the name of it but we did do a feed video and then at the very end of that video we took a close-up 
of the ingredients and the percentages of what's in there. Um, so that's kind of cool too. How do you know that a quail egg or a quail is egg bound? Also, how do you fix that? Um, electrolytes help a lot. Electrolytes help a lot. Um, you could, if you see it to be a problem with the, cons you know, I, I get a lot of questions as far as like, you know, my one hen seems to be really struggling is, is what I get a lot. I would recommend maybe separating her for a couple of days and making sure that she has her own source of food uh, and water, put electrolytes in the water, um, and then you need to reevaluate your feed. Because just because it's egg bound or just because of, you know, whatever, doesn't mean your feed is wrong. It could be that they're just not getting to it or whatever the case may be. So we would have to look into that. But if it's a majority of them, uh, the video about the feed is what to feed your Caternix quail two different feeds. Um, that's it. That's the name of it. Okay, what do you breed to get pearls and sparklies? What do you breed to get pearls and sparklies? So sparkly, uh, Jenna did. Um, and it is a cross between a jumbo pharaoh and a pansy. So it is, it's a feather sexable pansy. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Um, we cross them, right? Which means the, the sparklies are not as pretty as the pansies. Now they still are pretty, but they don't, they just don't have that extra pizzazz like a pansy does, right? because we put the pharaoh in there. But because we put the pansy in there, it's nowhere near as big as our pharaoh, so we, we lost things to get that. But it is cool to have a really nice looking color, a rare color, that is feather sexable. Because um, a lot of the feather sexable quails are um, common colors. Pharaohs, uh, Italians, Egyptians, things like that. Um, now there are, you know, pearls and sparklies and things like that that are that are um, rare colors, and that's just an extra one of them. You know how far behind you are? Yeah, a few. Uh, um, how far behind are we? Like five. Oh, okay. Not too What's the last question? The one that I just asked you? No. Fun remember the last person that. Okay. What's the name? Uh. Let's see. <clears throat> oh. Uh, Kiki's I, girls. Yeah, I'll just I believe that. Uh, that is where we're gonna stop. So I think there's five questions left, uh, and then uh, if you could, I would really appreciate some comments real quick to see if you guys want to do another one. Uh, if I didn't answer all your questions, and if I don't get feedback, then we'll just move on to a different topic. Um, so we'll answer these five. We'll do the giveaway. So are you caught up on the giveaway? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then uh, we'll call it a night. So go ahead. Okay. What is your ultimate goal as a breeder? Stand business. <laughs> <laughs> Pay the bills. Pay the bills. Um, I'm not a big believer on being... Ugh, how do I say that? Maybe I shouldn't say it. Probably maybe I should say it. Probably not. Right. Um... Now I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm very happy with what I have. We are blessed beyond measure. We've got a great family. We've got, the, you know, I've got Papa that has resources that I couldn't imagine. Jenna had the mindset to found all this. I mean, it's just, it's worked out perfectly. We are blessed. And I'm very happy. And if this is as big as we get, then that is fine with me. But I'm always striving for more. So when we get into this barn and we go full capacity in this barn, I'm done. Like, I just wanna, right now, I just wanna move into the barn, go to full capacity in this barn, and then stay the course, um, is my plan. That's my goal. My Tibetan tuxedos keep throwing me Tibetans and recessive whites. How do I make mm -hmm. their jeans just throw Tibetan tuxedos? You cannot. 
That is a wonderful question. So tuxedos, more than likely, are never going to breed true because it is not a true gene. The pharaohs are a true gene. Italians are a true gene. Um, SSCs were created by mixing genetics, right? Same thing goes with tuxedos. So we're going to use what? A Tibetan? Yes. Okay, so we're going to say Tibetan tuxedos. So let's say you put in 100 Tibetan tuxedos and they all hatch. You're going to get 33% to be Tibetan only. You're going to get 33% to be white only, and then you're going to get that 34% to be Tibetan tuxedo because it's a splice of genes. Um, and that goes with most of the colors, but that is a very, very good question. Okay, two more questions. Two more questions. Okay. Let's go first. Um, one of my five cages is filled with birds with bare patches on their lower backs. No males in the cage that we know of. Any idea what might be up? Bear patches on their lower backs. Uh, I think you might have a male. Um, it's not... Yeah, it's not uncommon for hens to do that to themselves or to each other if they're overcrowded. Um, so we recommend... And I always get made fun of for this, but it makes sense to me, okay? We recommend three and a half quail per square foot. <laughs> Look, if you've got an odd square foot, then it comes out to be the right number. I'm just <laughs> saying, okay? So three and a half quail per square foot seem, um, they seem very happy and content. So make sure that, um, well, I would go through the cage and make sure that uh, you sex them out one more time and make sure there's no males, and then make sure that you have a good square foot per quick. Okay, last question. How many different color pansies are there? True pansies? Three. There's more, but they're not. There's three. Okay, there's just a lot of people saying thank you and they would love a part two. Okay, so we will do part two in two weeks. Um, me and Papa rotate, ah, mother of God, I just cut myself. Um, mm -hmm. Me and Papa rotate every week, so he'll be on next week. He'll be doing the topic tomorrow on the video, plus some really exciting news. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and we've been holding off long enough. So I've already talked to Jenna, um, hopefully, I did not talk to Papa, but hopefully he'll have time tomorrow. Uh, we are going to finish up the lockdown video. She's going to edit it, and then we're going to be posting it on Tuesday, which means you will have time to watch it and get your questions, and then there's a reason why we're posting it, because Papa will be talking next Sunday, and then after that we'll do another genetics and breeding program. Any other? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Just a lot of thank yous. Awesome. Well, I'm glad everybody, hopefully everybody learned something. Um, hopefully everybody, uh, asked, got to ask a lot of their questions. You told me to keep track, didn't you? I have no idea what that is. I thought you did. Is. I don't know. I thought you said, what was that, um, 55? So, let's do the giveaway, right? Giveaway. Thanks. There's 200 in the giveaway right there. There. I don't know how many did you write down, or do you not know? But you kept up with everyone. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's, I don't know if you can see, can you guys see that? Nope. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of names in here. I hand wrote them, and then while I've been doing this, Ashley's been handwriting them, because we love you guys. So, without further ado. Tell us how this came to be out of the blue. Uh, Okay. He asked, or he told me to tell you guys how this came to be. So about a year ago, uh, I contacted Wynola Ranch. We got together, and we decided that um, 
the feedback, now Papa builds our cages, so we don't have Wynella Ranch cages. But I have a ton of customers that have them and they swear by them, they really like them. Um, and so I contacted them and we decided, I have the, we have the quail, they have the cages, we might as well work together. Um, so we do giveaways and, and uh, stuff like that periodically. And we've been doing the Q&A lately, and they've been watching it, and uh, they just said that, you know, hey, you've got a lot of dedicated people on there, and, uh, you know, we're okay if you want to give one away. And, uh, and so that was really cool of them. So, uh, you know, it gives them some advertisement, Wynola Ranch, check them out, wynolaranch.com. They've got, they've got great pages, and they offer free shipping. So, like the cage that we're giving you for free, in just a second, uh, is $89.99 with free shipping. Uh, now, you're not going to pay anything at all. Um, whoever I do pick, you will want to contact me. So I'm going to give you my contact information now, and then I will get with you and give you the coupon code. We One time on Facebook, um, I gave the coupon code out to the winner like on social media. That wasn't very smart because everybody saw it. And then everybody ran to the website, and I got in trouble. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one thing this time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, lesson learned. Uh, so you can text me or call me at 937-760-7282, uh, and I will get you the coupon code. Uh, you can message me on Facebook. Uh, once I do this and I post this video... Uh, then I will find your name, whoever I pick, on the comments, uh, and I will comment so you get a notification also, just in case you're not live. Um, and then you have 24 hours uh, to let me know that you got this and, and we get the ball rolling. Uh, if I don't hear from you, then we will pick again, okay? So, make sure if you buy a cage, and we're not saying you have to buy a cage. Um, I take pride in the fact that Papa builds our cages. I like that every, almost everything we have is built here on the farm. That's, I mean, that's something really, really cool. Um, but a lot of people don't have the time or the resources or the energy, you know. And uh, so if you don't, then that's completely okay. But Wynola Ranch, I've heard great things about them. So, without further ado... I'm trying to mix them up. Okay, got it. Jay Stewart. I think that's a T. It's my hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty you sure. You cannot blame me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it says Jay Stewart. So, congratulations. I'm going to keep this to the side because I will forget. Uh, I will find your name. I will comment. Make sure you message me or call me or text me uh, sometime tomorrow, uh, and we will get you taken care of. If I don't hear from you, uh, then on Tuesday, then we will re-pick uh, again. So congratulations, good luck, and believe me, you really want to watch the, the short video that Pop is going to do tomorrow. So uh, thank you, everybody that contributed. Uh, thank you for all your questions, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.